In this video, I'm gonna be showing you guys my DaVinci Resolve color workflow. Diving into the project settings, the color management, the different things you need to set up before you're actually color grading your footage, and then showing you guys my step-by-step -step on how I set up my entire node tree system. I am going to be color grading Lumix vlog footage and there will be sample clips down in the description if you guys want to follow along. This color workflow, even though I'm using it specifically for color grading Lumix footage, this does work for any other brand like Sony, Canon, etc. And a huge thanks to Artlist for sponsoring this video, but more on them later. The first thing we need to do before even getting into color grading our footage itself is going to be setting up your project settings and your timeline. So right here on my screen, I have a different project set up. We're gonna be hopping into the color grain thing. But the first thing I do wanna to touch point on is just when you are setting up a project, I personally recommend having a template project that you can just copy and paste to everything else. So in my local database, I actually have this. This is just my default template where it's already set up to everything I want. So when I open it up, it's going to have all my footage, all my folders already laid out. So when I go into project settings, it already has my timeline format. It already has my prec correct color space transform. So when you are setting this up for the first time, go to your project library. And if you don't know how to set up a project library, just go to add project library, go to create, you can name it whatever you want, hit browse and pit wherever you want. A couple things that you wanna add to your own project library. I personally recommend adding all your footage, however you like organizing your footage over here. But what you should change right off the bat is your timeline format. Personally, I recommend going to 4K timeline. Then the next thing you're gonna wanna change is the color space transform. Now, this is the biggest part, and this is what it comes out as default. Now, a lot of people like color grading in the DaVinci Wide Gambit, and if you want your final deliverable to be a Rec. 709 Gamma 2.4. This just allows the most flexibility in DaVinci Resolve, and technically it does give you the most color depth. However, if you're on a PC, you could probably just get away with doing a Rec. 709 9 gamma 2.4 and a rec 709 2.4 depending if you're just using LUTs that are acting as a conversion LUT from rec 709. Now if you're on a MacBook though it's actually preferred to do rec 709A and rec 709A so again this really depends on what you're editing. For my personal use case I'm going to be using the entire timeline color space as a rec 709A and then using the output color space as also the rec 709A since this is what is most preferred on editing on Mac books when you're delivering on QuickTime and different things like that. And then when you're uploading to YouTube, I've noticed this is giving me the most color accurate results from what I'm exporting versus what I'm seeing on my entire computer screen for a MacBook. With all that said, you hit save, you're basically going to be good to go. Now, the first thing I'm going to get into is going to be the node tree and the timeline color setup, setting up your entire color node tree. I do want to start off with this first clip showing you guys the different types of way to set up your node tree and then my preferred way of actually doing it. Now, as I just touched point on, how you set up your color space is going to really impact how you're going to be viewing your entire footage. So for example, there's really two primary ways that you should be setting up your node tree. But the basic way, depending if you are in a DaVinci Wide Gambit and a Rec. 709 Gamma 2.4, which this is really ideal for if you need to be eventually making this into an HDR or you need to be sending your footage to Netflix or different things like that, that is when DaVinci Wide Gambit and shooting in a specific Rec. 709 Gamma 2.4 color timeline is going to be giving you the best results and most flexibility. It just depends on your specific workflow. So for showing you guys that workflow first, everything that's in between node, your first node and your last node everything else is going to be where you're going to be doing all the color workflow. For your first node, what you're gonna to wanna to do is input your color space. So for in this case, I'm shooting on the Panasonic S1 Mark II or the Lumix camera. I'm going to be in my input color space. You wanna change that to whatever your camera footage is. So mine in this case is going to be the Panasonic V Gambit and then my gamma is going to be V Log. And then you wanna make your output color space DaVinci Wide Gambit and then you want your uh, output Put gamma to be DaVinci Intermediate. Then from there, your last node, you're going to change your input color space to input gamma, and then you want your output to be whatever you're exporting to. So for in most case scenarios, you're at Rec. 709 and a gamma 2.4. To show you kind of what this looks like, we'll go over here, we'll do make sure my DaVinci Wide Gambit and then my Rec. 709 
gamma 2.4 is selected. And this is kind of what this looks like. This is going to be giving you the most color fidelity in your footage itself and kind of giving you guys the most room to play with the footage itself. But for the majority of people, if you are shooting, again, just shooting for social media or for YouTube, if you're on a PC, just use Rec. 709 Gamma 2.4, or if you're on a Mac, just use the Rec. 709 auto and it will just automatically have the best settings for you. So again, since I am on a MacBook, these are going to be the settings that I'm going to personally be using. The main difference for your node tree system, instead of having that first node convert it to the DaVinci Wide Gambit and the DaVinci uh, Intermediate, and then having the last node be intermediate to Rec. 709, the only major difference is when you make your CST or your conversion node is when you're going to be wanting to have the input color space be Panasonic and then just automatically throw it to a Rec. 709 and a Gamma 2.4, and that's going to be giving you those results. Now, if you see right here, there's going to be two clips right here, one on the bottom and one on the top. Um, the one on the bottom is going to actually be using the Panasonic Vlog conversion that comes from their website themselves. This is what it automatically, you pit a conversion LUT from the Panasonic Lumix website. This is the conversion LUT. This is what it converts to. It just feels like it, it's gonna take more work and that's when you need to add contrast, add saturation. The skins do look a little bit more pink. Now for this one, which is, gets into our workflow, this is my personal conversion LUT for Rec. 709. Um, from Lumix Vlog to Rec. 709. There again, there will be a link in the description for this as well if you're interested in downloading it. That's what I'm gonna be using as the basis of my entire color workflow, just because this is kind of like the GOAT for all my vlog footage because it kind of tries to make the footage look as realistic and as natural as possible right out of camera. So you only have to do a little bit of work and not a ton of work. Like for example, the Lumix um, vlog conversion LUT that is on their website. This is trying to make it as color accurate as possible. And this is my personal conversion LUT that I created and made for Lumix cameras. Let's get into actually the node tree system and how I set up my entire node. For my node tree, I'm going to hit um, option S on a MacBook, or I think it's all S on a Windows computer. I'm going to set up my first node, which is going to be for my noise reduction. My second node is going to be my white balance slash contrast. My third node is going to be for my primaries. My fourth node is going to be for my curves. And then my last three nodes is going to be my Q versus sat. My seventh node is going to be a look LUT. And then finally, my last node is going to be just if I wanna add any grain or different film effects like that, which I've kind of been enjoying doing recently on a lot of my different footage. Now, this is my entire node tree setup and kind of workflow. If you really wanna take it one step further, you can go into where your LUTs are. This is where I would draw my basic vlog footage for you get into color grading and doing all of this if you don't if you like having your things labeled like I do you don't have to do this every single time you color grade what you can do is right click your image hit grab still and what that's going to do is you're going to go to your gallery and your gallery is going to have these different stills now I've already set this up and have it power grade is going to be applying to all of your projects in the future for whatever project that is on that database itself for when you've set it up in the beginning, having this entire database. So if you hit something on a power grade, it's always gonna be on any project you go to, the power grade is going to be there. So what you do is you take this still, throw it to power grade. Now, anytime you are color grading any other footage and you wanna set up your entire node tree, all you have to do is go here, and it'll set it up. Now, if you wanna do this node tree and for specific cameras, for example, V-Log, you can have that be set up. You can go over here, set that up, go over here, set it up. Boom, you kind of get the idea. Once you get this entire workflow set up, it allows you to have just hit this, copy and paste all of these to your theme so you don't have to go to the clip, for example, every single time and go like this and make all your different nodes when you're doing it. If you enjoy that, you can do that, but it's this is kind of a quick way to build out your entire node tree by just having one tree, once you build it out, make a still, and then you can just simply drag and drop that uh, power grade or your node tree onto every other clip afterwards. With all that said, let's dive into actually color grading our first clip and kind of the walkthrough on everything. What we're gonna start off in doing is going to be correcting our white balance itself. Now for this image, um, on my first 
node that I'm going to be affecting, which is number node number two. What I'm going to be doing is add a little bit of contrast to kind of give it a little bit more of a punch. And I'm going to be warming up my images ever so slightly and then bringing it down to the greens ever so slightly. And that's what I'm going to be doing to my first node just to have a little bit more contrast. Then I go into my primaries. You can do this on one node. I personally like separating it so I can just see how I'm affecting the clip by disabling and re-abling by just hitting um, Command D. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm going to bring down my gain, bring also down my gamma and bring down my lift by just a little bit, just to kind of give it a little bit more juice to the image itself. Moving on to curves, this is where I'm going to be applying my S curve. Now, if you want, there's two ways you can do this. You can use your color picker, grab the skin, and then you're gonna know where the hair skin is going to be lying in here. So what I'm gonna do is add a little S curve or alternatively you can make it a little bit more sharp or a little bit more flat. Again, I like contrasty images, but I'm going to make it a little bit more neutral for this one. One thing I did forget to mention earlier though, when you are color grading and you're specifically on a MacBook, you do actually wanna change your color display to like not have the image be as bright as possible. And I perfect scenario, you do want to be color grading in a dark room. So you're not having any extra light or color affecting the image itself on when you're color grading. So I do have kind of a preset set up for P3 500 nits to kind of have my screen just be naturally a little bit darker when it's at full brightness. So I'm giving a more accurate um, representation when I am adjusting for exposure. And again, you ideally want to be in a dark room, you don't want to be in a room with different color temperatures and different things like that. So continuing on hue versus sat, this is honestly only where I'm going to be adjusting the skin tones here. And this is where I'm going to either bring them up or down. Now in this case, it's not like this needs a ton of work. I personally, since this is my wife here on camera, I personally know her skin, even though this looks pretty natural, I know she has a green hue and not a pink hue to her skin so this is where it would be more closer to this where her skin is a naturally a little bit more green instead of pink that's kind of the before and after i like my footage looking natural as possible if you do want you can add another node here start shifting your colors to give different looks and styles like if you want to be a little bit more warm in certain areas and different things like that. What I'm basically doing is I am honestly just looking at this clip itself and trying to shift the tones where I am seeing it. Yes, can you look at your vector scope? Can you look at your waveform, see what the colors are doing on all of that? Yes, you totally, totally can. However, I just prefer kind of looking at it via my eye and see how, what am I doing? How is it affecting the image? What do I think? One of the final steps to finishing this clip is adding the added look LUT where today's sponsor comes into play, Artlist. Artlist is one of the industry leaders when it comes to tools for creators, not only offering high quality music and footage, but also some incredible AI powered features. With some tools like AI search, you can copy a song link from YouTube or Spotify now, drop it in and instantly find similar tracks. Or with the new voice cloning, you can now clone your own voice or someone else's to get more personalized recordings. But one feature I love specifically using in this video is their collection of LUTs. You can preview different LUTs they provide with multiple sources to see the various different looks and styles they offer. It kind of makes it super easy to kind of dial your own personal look after you kind of view the entire different catalog of different LUTs they are providing for you. Now, some of my personal favorite LUTs from Artlist is going to be Beach, Gazelle, and Hacky Sack. So what you're going to be doing on this clip after kind of color correcting all your footage is throw on one of these LUTs, adjust the intensity, and kind of get the final polished look and style for this clip. If you want to try this out or explore all the other powerful tools Artlist offers, there's going to be a link in the description. You'll get two free months when you sign up for an annual plan. And then thanks again for Artlist for sponsoring this video. All right, diving back into the clip itself. Now that we kind of have this added look what, um, thanks to Artlist, um, what we're going to be kind of doing is kind of personalizing this just a little bit more. I personally like adding grain to my clip itself. So I'm gonna add this film grain and then we're going to kind of what I like doing is zooming into a darker area of the clip and then seeing making it a little more intense and then bringing it back. 
The last and final step is the noise reduction. Honestly, you don't really need to add any noise reduction to this clip specifically, but on certain clips, if it's just a little bit too noisy when you're filming and you're looking kind of in the, the shadow ranges and you want to say, fix this stuff up right here, this is when you would be adding noise reduction. You add it to your clip and then you just slowly add it until you get to a place where you kind of like where the grain is at. Um, so then the before and after. Okay, let's do the start to finish from everything that we did on this clip itself. We start off with our Rec 709. We added our white balance and our contrast to the image. We adjust the exposure for the primaries. The curves to just add a, make it a little bit more softer. Added our curves just to kind of help soften and make it a little less contrasty, ironically. Added our hue versus sat to just fix any skin tones. And then added the added look LUT thanks to Artless. And then lastly, going to be adjusting and adding a little bit grain to just to add a little bit character to the entire image. Before and then the after. Again, if you're interested in color grading any of these other clips, there will be a link in the description so you can play around with all of this different footage. If you guys have any questions about my color workflow, leave it down in the description below. If you guys are interested in seeing why I personally recommend Lumix cameras, well, check out that video right there. YouTube recommends you might like this video right here. Till next one, guys, peace.